right, hi everybody. This is Chicks Talking Picks, a bi-weekly image discussion with two nature pros, or as we like to call ourselves, two nature nuts. Um, we're here to review your images, images sent in by viewers like you to help you understand how you can better improve for competitions or just for your wall. It doesn't make any difference why you send them in. We're going to uh, do a little review discussion. Jenny and I will discuss uh, how, how it all works as we go along. So I'm Sandy Zelasco, pro photographer, uh, of, and my business is called Sandra Lee Photography. But my website, you can find me at investinnature.org. And uh, I've been in business nearly 30 years, and I'm coming to you today from San Diego. I'm home today, so glad to be here. Jenny? Hi, I'm Jenny Wolf. I'm also in San Diego. Um, my formal education is actually in biology, where I spent many years working in restoration ecology and nearshore fisheries. But photography was always a part of that. Um, and in addition to my biology background, I'm also a hot air balloon pilot, which is what I've been doing a lot of photography of lately. And you can see my work at wolfheartimages.com and Facebook and Instagram as well. All right, up, up and away, Jenny. <laughs> Why don't you tell our viewers what this channel actually is all about? Okay, um, like Sandy was saying, you submit your images to us and um, we'll discuss them because frequently if you submit images to a competition, you don't ever get to figure out why it did well or didn't do well. So Sandy and I wanna take you behind the scenes and give you a view of what judges do when we judge and how we discuss and just the whole process. Um, so whether you're entering a competition or just trying to improve your photography, um, this will help you look at your work more critically and also be more intentional when you take your photos and when you process your photos. Exactly, love it. Well, Jenny and I have been, uh, we've been judging the San Diego County Fair for maybe five, six years now. Uh, usually in the mammal category, but we've, we're always throwing a couple more categories. And uh, we judged for local camera clubs and uh, other places out there. Um, so we feel we're uh, somewhat qualified to let you know, uh, you know, how you can improve those images. And we came up with the idea of doing this back uh, a couple of years ago when we saw that you know, we, when we had to actually reject a lot of images at the San Diego County Fair for just little tiny tidbits, little things that could have been fixed before, uh, you know, they ever got to our eyes. So let's get started today. I think we have an image by Paul Ellsbury. And let's go ahead and start with his first image. All right. Uh, I'll start with it. I, I, I love this image. I think it's very serene and calm. It gives me a good vibe. It makes me want to be there. I'd love to be that person running on the shore. Um, and the colors are pretty, you know, it's sunset there. You've got the, the sun uh, lowering in the background, but, but where you see the sun, um, you know, I kind of look at the girl next and it kind of throws me into a diagonal across the screen, which is kind of fun. I like that, that feeling. Uh, what I think maybe could be improved is those two dirt, uh, well, hillside. I'm sure maybe Torrey Pine Hills or someplace uh, where this was taken. They aren't really telling me too much of the story. So I think, uh, you know, if you had a little more room in front without those two dark um, uh, hillsides, I think it might make it a little bit stronger image. But I like the way the, the girl running is positioned and where the sun is positioned. Jenny? Yeah, I agree. The diagonal line between those two is really nice. 
um, you know, whether the color is actually what that sunset was doesn't matter because it's, you know, an appealing color. Um, there is a couple little things I think might help. Um, one of them has to do with timing. It The runner almost looks like they're armless. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe if you'd waited till their arms were, you know, spread away from the body, which, you know, would have just been like another shutter click away, possibly, um, so that you had just that arm sticking out. I mean, you know, they're there, but to just see it would help. Um, and if they were running into the frame, I think it would be a little better than running out. Um, those are just to keep in mind when you're shooting. Um, there's also a little black spot up in the top right in the cloud, which could be a bird or a sensor spot. Either way, if, if you're putting this in a competition and you can take that out, I'd just take it out because it's not clear enough what it is. Um, yeah, I agree with everything you say. Um, and Paul may have a series of frames that he might be able to go back and look at to see if those arms are out in front of that runner or not. Yeah, yeah. And, and I it's see, really nice. What was yeah, that? And I see a couple of spots in the um, in the middle of the frame also, right in the water yeah. uh, that could be eliminated. There's like three spots there. Yeah, I mean, people. they could very well be birds, but from this yes. vantage point, you can't tell and they could be center spots and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, but overall a great silhouette shot. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's look at Paul's second image. Jenny, you wanna start with this one? Okay, so obviously another silhouette. Um, and this one he did a little bit more. He's trying to pan with the bicyclist. You can tell because the, the bottom is a little blurry there. Um, it'd be nice if the bicyclist was a bit sharper. Uh, I know that's really tough when you're panning. Um, and um, one of the things that struck me in looking at this is when you center something in the image, it kind of gives it a static feel. Uh, and yet it's a moving object. So it's kind of working against each other, having a moving object, but centered. So you might want to give her a little more room to ride into, um, whether you had another frame or just crop it differently. But otherwise it's the same gorgeous sky. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, what do you want to add, Sandy? Yeah, I agree. Uh, maybe a little bit of crop on the right hand side and even making it kind of a not really a square, but uh, that might help it just a little bit there. Also, if you maybe had gotten a little bit lower perspective, so you had the bottom of those wheels, mm -hmm. that might have, I want to say, come for full circle, but I'm not trying to make a pun there. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. it, you know, you, at least the axles, uh, that might have helped a little bit or, it, you know, improved it a little bit. But one thing I see that's going to be hard to get rid of is that chromatic aberration around the entire body of that rider. And you can see those. Um, mm. Let's see if I can use my annotate tool to show you I what I mean. If you want. Yeah, why don't you draw that for me? see it. Yes, that whole, yeah, that whole little outline, even on the inside of the rider on his arms, her arms, whichever it is, um, around the face, the hair. I think uh, that's a real, if you can't fix that in raw with a simple slider in, in ACR, then it's a real tedious thing to get rid of that. And you may not want to, but uh, as a judge, I would not um, accept this image because of that. I, I, that's honestly, I believe that's what I would be um, doing if it was in a competition. So, great. All right, Paul, thank you for turning in two gorgeous images for us to review. All right, this image is by Dan Nugier. And um, and I guess I get to start with it. Yeah, I do. love I love it. 
I, I love it. It's very busy, but I like the fact that there's only three people. And of course, you like your subjects to have be odd numbers, one, three, five, that type of thing. It looks like a nice family that's enjoying the bridge. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Uh, I, I like that you turned it to black and white. I love the leading line into the scene of the bridge itself. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of a neat thing. Jenny, what, what were you going to say about it? Um, for me, I, I think this is more about the architecture than the people. Um, the people certainly give it some scale and add that human element, but with them walking away and um, from you, it's just kind of like they were there, but you have this wonderful leading line of the bridge coming in and then the dome. Um, you know, architecturally, it's, it's a lot more interesting to me than the people, although I find it amusing the, the how they're, you know, tall to shortest. Yeah. <laughs> kind of gives you a diagonal that then follows the diagonal of the building that there's that's in the background um, that goes up towards the dome. Uh, yeah, I think there's many strong lines and, uh, uh, you know, being diagonal lines, you know, rounded lines, some curbs, you know, I, I think it's a good combination. And the sky was performing also. It's just beautiful sky. Yeah, and as far as black and white, I, I don't think in color there would have been anything added to this. Having been in that location, you know, there's nothing that would, the black and white's a good choice. You know, the, mm -hmm. the color would have drawn away from yeah. anything. It would have been a little more confusing or a little, a little um, I don't know the word for it. But yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, black and white on this choice is really great. I like the way the line comes out of the left co bottom corner and, you know, follows right through into the middle of the frame. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very nice, nicely cropped. I love the, uh, you know, most of, of all the detail in the architecture that's right there in your face too. But I agree now, Jenny, that you mentioned it. It is not a people person uh, image. It's an more of an architecture image. So great, great job. Nice job, Dan. Thanks for turning that in. All right, let's go on to, this is uh, an image by Michelle Mayer and a bunch of fox gloves. I love those little things, but you gotta know, I think they're poisonous to pets. So be <laughs> careful on that one. Um, yeah, Michelle, this is interesting. I, uh, uh, it's interesting why you turned it to black and white. I'd like to know why, because I thought these were really colorful. Uh, you know, the ones I've seen are really pretty pink and, uh, but I'm, so I'm not sure why you turned it to black and white, but yeah, I bet you had a good reason. Uh, for me, the focus is down in the lower left corner and that's not where my eye goes first. My eye goes to that. Um, yeah, my eye goes up my to my goes here. Yes, exactly. My eye goes to that blurry white. Um, that's the first thing I see. And then I notice that it's not in focus. And maybe a little uh, better depth of field may have improved that a little bit. Uh, what do you think, Jenny? Yeah, um, I agree that my eye first goes to that flower and then I'm disappointed because it's blurry, you know, when I want to see details. Mm -hmm. um, something to consider is focus stacking might have been uh, a way to, you know, get some added depth. Um, another thing when I was looking at this for a while, what I found interesting was this area here because you have these nice, this nice detail with the little um, hairs coming off of the, the textures on the flower. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that's a better story than the whole picture is one. Mm -hmm. um, so I think going in closer and picking out one thing to talk about um, and simplifying, uh, you know, and, and yeah, 
good idea. Finding that little detail that really brought you to see this in the first place. And in black and white, that works because that's the detail mm -hmm. and not the color. So um, I think just being a little more focused on what uh, what brought you to the scene in the first place would help take it to the next level. Sure. I, I do think that the potential is there, even though, even if you don't go close in, because there are repetitive shapes and, um, you know, uh, like I said, it is a very pretty flower. I'd like to see some color in it, mm -hmm. but Michelle, let us know why you turned it to black and white. I'm really curious about that. All right, let's see Michelle's second one. She sent in three this week. Jenny, you want to start? Okay. Um, I like the graphic nature of this one. Um, there's a couple things that I think would help. Um, but what is really cool is you have this hummingbird in the middle. But I wish I could see it better. And I think, because um, obviously there's some sort of glass between the camera and it. And if you put on a polarizer, you might have been able to cut down on some of the reflections and get a better view of the hummingbird. Um, one of the things that bothered me was right here <laughs> with this touching the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah. And I was going to say either have them both touch or just the one. I yeah, mean, I'd actually not touch, both not touch. Right. I like the space. So either, I mean, it seems like this one's longer, so either give some space or you could even just clone out some of it. You know, mm -hmm. since the background's so plain, you would, it would probably be an easy fix. Um, but yeah, uh, it's got lots of texture and I like the symmetry. It just needs to be a little tweaked to be a little more symmetrical. Um, what do you yeah. think? I, I like that too. It's it's kind of mechanical, symmetrical, and then you're surprised by this beautiful little hummingbird back there in a nest. Um, so for next year, uh, if possible, I don't know where this was taken, but clean the glass. Um, <laughs> that might help us see the bird a little bit better. But uh, even a little, I think your depth of field is good on the lower half of the image. Uh, maybe just a little bit more uh, that top part of the image where you're seeing right in the middle of the top. It's a little out of focus. And I'd like to see the whole thing in focus because um, it just looks like you said, it's like, um, you know, very graphic. So nice job. And I hope the hummingbird had its little babies and everything's safe with them. So good job, Michelle. I like it. I like it in black and white too. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to Michelle's third image. And Jenny, this your turn. Um, I can start. I started the last one, but that's okay. Oh, you did? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll start. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so I love the red color. Of course, that red's going to bring you into the to the image. I like the shallow depth of field in this, uh, but I think um, I think maybe the body of the bee needs to be the in the plane of focus. Uh, I, I I think that's what I want to see. I want to see the bee in focus along with those nice edges to the right of the bee mm -hmm. that are um, the little petals that are out kind of floating. Because uh, I think that's where your focus is, kind of behind the bee. And so I know bees are hard to do. You have to, you know, you really have to be on top of it to, to get a bee in focus, unless it stops for a while. And I might want to see a little more of what the bee's doing and just not sitting on the petal. Jenny? Um, I think, yeah, what you all said, and I want to add that um, what really helps even in insect photos is seeing the eyes when you're looking at any animal, um, whether it's a mammal or not, uh, having the eyes in the image helps bring the viewer in. So I think if you, and, you know, like Sandy said, bees are, 
are tough. <laughs> um, they're always moving. But if you, you know, were patient enough, maybe you can get it when it was turned around and you're seeing the face. And um, unless you're trying to get movement in the bee, you might want to speed up your shutter so that you, because right now part of the bee seems blurry because he's moving. Part of it might be different plane of focus, but in here it looks like there's movement. Right. Um, so yeah, you need to be intentional about the movement and exaggerated about it or no movement. Right, right. <coughs> and I saw some other pictures she has where the wings are moving, which is really cool and very intentional. In this case, it doesn't look as intentional because it's just such a slight movement. Um, so yeah, I think just waiting for him to turn around so we can see his face and uh, might help a lot. Yeah, and I think that dark part on the left-hand side, since the bee's almost smack dab in the middle, yeah. I think you could crop from the left and not lose anything. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I like what's going on on the right with the soft focus behind you. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, with, even without the bee, I think that is, is kind of an interesting mm -hmm. little composition on the right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Nice job, Michelle. Thank you for turning in, uh, being consistent with us and turning in a couple more images this week. We love that. So, um, you know, if you want to be included in the critique uh, and the discussion that Jenny and I have, uh, please send your images, uh, upload your images to um, chicks talking pics at gmail.com. It's right there on your screen. Uh, size your images to 1920 pixels on the longest size, and please put it in JPEG format. Uh, we also um, don't want you to post anybody else's images. We want to make sure that's your work, so don't infringe on anybody else's copyright. And don't send it to us if you don't want us to critique it. <laughs> All right. And. Uh... Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll get notified when we post new uh, new critiques. Yeah, great. Well, thanks everybody. That was really fun this week. And we'll look forward to seeing more of your images the next time around. Okay, thanks. see you next time. All righty, bye-bye.